back to the channel. I wanted to go over some paint stuff this morning with you guys that might help some of y'all on your project because this is actually a pretty big issue that we run into um, all the time with our stuff. So with us buying and selling salvage uh, title vehicles, uh, we're in this obviously to make money. That's the only reason why I do it. Um, the salvage title flip cars, I'm not in for it for quality. I'm not in for it uh, for growing around my reputation of doing high-end work. I'm not in it for pictures or videos of showcasing my work. We are literally doing this only to make money. That's the only goal here. Quality is not the goal here. Um, so I wanted to kind of show you uh, how to cut a little bit of cost and might help you on uh, your project and what you're working with. So let's go in the booth. I just sprayed some Bulldog on the bumper um, and I'm actually gonna show you a flip card that we're gonna spray this morning and I'm gonna show you how one way that I do to cut cost. So let's cut this booth off. Let's take a walk inside. All right, so right when we enter the booth, first off, let's go ahead and address this. Anytime we are doing flip cars, we always scotch right or wet sand our headlights and then uh, we will clear them. So you can see right here, somebody's either put something on it or it's delaminating or something. Eddie's come in here and just put a quick wet sand on it. Got them prepped out. We'll clear both of these. These will look brand spanking new. So if you're selling cars, that's definitely a big thing. But maybe you're not. This is probably what y'all are looking at on your Fox body your Trans Am, your Firebird, whatever. You went to the junkyard, you got you some new parts and uh, you need to get it all painted. So you're gonna mask it up in your driveway. You're gonna mask it up in your garage like this. We went over on the channel how to mask it up. So you already know how to do that. Um, and now you're ready to paint it. So you have your old door, you know, this door matches that door. This is the original to the car. The same would be with you. Uh, you got in a wreck, you hit the wall or something up front and you had to replace all these parts. You have your original fender over here. So this fender was good. This fender matches the rest of your paint job. So what you did was you replaced your front bumper, you replaced your hood on this situation, and you replaced your fender. This will apply to anything that you um, replace, even if you just did your hood and you know somebody got drunk and jumped on it and you had to change your hood out and your fenders and front bumpers and all that matched, um, then you would do this the same way. Basically what you're gonna do is whatever panel you're painting, you're also going to blend the adjacent panel. Um, that's that's going to be part of this equation right here, how we make money. Now, you can see that, you know, we've got scratches. I mean, I can literally fill these things. They're so freaking rough. Uh, we still have a little tree sap. Um, like I said, this is not quality. The name of the game here is not quality. It's to make money. Um, it's fast. It's to make money. That's going to be the name of the game here. So this is not a quality video. This is how to stretch your colors and how to make you some money. So what we need to get color on is we need to get color on our fender, our front bumper, and our hood. And when it's all done, we don't want it to be an eyesore, hopefully, and we want to do it for cheap. So our paint that we bought, uh, we went and took our old fender to the paint store first off, and we used uh, color chips. So we walked in the paint store and we said, um, you know, we need to get paint for, we need to get paint for this color. Here's our color code. Uh, can you pull chips for me? Um, Mr. Gene at the paint store said yes. He handed me some chips. I didn't even think about recording it. I went outside. I held the chips up in the sunlight and I um, picked which one matched the closest to mine. Um, each color code can have sometimes 15 variances um, in it. So if you go into the paint store and you just purchase paint off of your uh, code, you're not you're going to get prime. Prime might not match. I think today actually, I think Prime does not match today. So um, they're gonna give you variants. They're gonna give you different chips that you can then um, go outside, hold it up in sunlight and see what matches the best for you. So we did that. I picked one um, and I already knew this problem. So I went ahead and actually picked two of them. And when I went inside, I said, Mr. Gene, can I get this chip in Omni Plus? Omni is gonna be the, uh, cheapest um, equation where I'm at at NCS but Omni Plus is the cheapest uh, matching equation I guess you could say it's the most likely to get you a good match is to go with Omni Plus instead of just the Omni um, basically the Omni is the bottom grade Omni Plus is a touch higher and then it keeps climbing up in price and quality from there on the how close you know it can match but a lot of times Omni Plus we have great success with uh, this morning I said Mr. Gene can I get Omni um, Plus in this color, he said, you can't. He said, the chip you picked that matches the best, because I said it matched the best, 
He said, the chip you pick, you can only get it in Deltron. And I said, I, I, I can't do Deltron really, honestly, because it's too expensive for me to make money on this flip. So I can't put a bunch of money into paintwork and then still come out on top on the other side. So I said, all right, well, how about this chip beside it? This was my second best, you know, I'm gonna blend it. So if it don't match perfect, I'm gonna blend it out. Hopefully you don't see it. Um, he said, nope, can't get that in Omni. Uh, plus either you gotta get Deltron. I said, crap. I said, all right, screw it. Just give me freaking Deltron and I'll stretch it. Um, so when I say I'm gonna stretch it, what I normally mean is I'm gonna get some scrap paint out and I'm gonna mix me together some uh, scraps or I'm gonna find a scrap that's as close as possible to the color that I purchase, and I'm gonna lay that down first. That way I already have that foundation color laid and then I can go back over top of it with my actual color. So I've that's me here this morning and this is our Deltron. Now just for, so you understand, this is a pint. So at the paint store, they gave me half of a pint. I, it's mixed one to one, so I reduced it to a full pint. For half a pint right here, $85 in Deltron. You can't make really good money on flip cars when you're paying $85 for half of a pint. So, you know, if I was to buy, a, really to do this job, I probably need to buy a quart, or I need to buy a whole pint of color to make a quart, and that probably would've got me close, um, but we gotta stretch it. So this is our actual color. Okay, let me turn on the light. All right, this is basically our color. And then I have took an old color and actually mixed two together to get me a, hopefully a decent drop coat. So let me show you this one. This is what I've mixed. So you can definitely see that it has, you know, some of it changes some of the colors, which I mean that, that can affect the way it drops. But we're kind of in the same family. You see what I'm saying with the grays? Okay, we're kind of just looking for the grays. See how when kind of it flops. I mean, yeah, you have some purple bronze, but we just want the same family so we can get rid of that, all of that fender in here. So being, being on this that we're going over a black bumper, a solid black bumper, that's actually easy to cover. And this fender is close to solid black, which is pretty easy to color. But this right here is a nightmare. So if you don't put something down over it you're going to have all of the black spots that are going to be splotchy through it but then this whole panel is going to be lighter than everything else and these panels are going to be darker because you're starting on black versus starting on light gray so what we're going to do now is with our drop coat we're going to come in here and we're going to lay our drop coat over our hood and our fenders and our bumpers and we're going to blend our drop coat just a little bit into the panels so let me get this in the gun let me go ahead and just shoot it out real fast for you and then i'll show you what i'm talking about on your drop coat all right so we laid our first coat of our drop coat now we got more but i want to show you all what some issues look like so if you're painting on your car these projects are perfect for me to teach you all this kind of stuff i need to do more of this um, because of the low quality so i do have a lot of issues with these um, First off, we have a couple things going on. So this is contamination. That's what contamination looks like. That's something on the hood, even though it's been primed, that has got on it, whether it's grease, WD-40, tire shine, or whatever. This is all contamination. So this is what contamination would look like in your paint on your product. So I didn't do this on purpose. This is gun spitting. So I did not filter this paint, and this paint's old. So it's kind of got clumps in it and um, I didn't filter it. This is also all contamination. So this almost looks like when me and Eddie maybe picked this hood up or was holding that side or something, maybe grease on our fingers got on it and then it's smeared. But either way, uh, these are all forms of contamination. If you see this in your paint, um, this is what you're looking for. This, I actually seen this and you will see this come out of your gun. It's just spitting if you don't filter your paint or you don't mix it good. This was not on a shaker or anything like this. Again, this is more spitting of the paint uh, where it was not mixed thoroughly and this is contamination this is what contamination looks like now these contaminations all this contamination i'm pretty sure uh this coat's already dry i just sprayed it uh, my next coat should bury this stuff and it should go away if not you can use fish eye remover uh, in your base coat but you this normally when i see this kind of stuff it normally goes away on my uh second or third pass uh let's see here if i can find any other flaws uh there is your uh, tree sap that Eddie did not get off. Uh, normally I do encourage my employees and my guys prepping to get tree sap off. All you have to do is take a little bit of paint thinner and wipe it off, but for some reason that was missed. Now we are working fast, so uh, I'll give it to them. The scratches, this is what, when you leave scratches behind, this is just a first coat of base, but you can see that you can still see the scratches, and I think that is, yeah, a form of 
rock chips or scratching also. So that's our first coat. Uh, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go ahead and completely 100% spray this out, get this completely buried with one coat, our drop coat of base, and then we will walk it again to show you what covered up out of this. And then we will move on to our actual base coat and our clear coat. And I will show you what the end product looks like doing it like this. Right, so here's what our second and third coat looks like. Here's just goes to show you the quality that we're working in. Look at the trash on the floor. So I am willing to put myself out there to get bashed and all the professional painters come in here and bash me just so I can help others out and kind of show you, um, I guess, what can be done that's not correct but the DIY guys, what can be done. So this is our mixed base that we whipped up out of old paint to, um, to just put down as a drop. Now, as you can see, let me see if I can get my sunlight. So this is a light that you can purchase that represents, it's called the exact match saber, looks like. Um, this represents sunlight. So if we pulled it out right now, this is what it would look like. So there's our color up there. Uh, it doesn't look like it has purples in it in person, but on the camera it does. Um, which even on the camera makes it look like it has purples down there. But you can see our colors, they're not terrible. Okay, we want them in the same family. We don't want them to match right now. But you can see where my dust goes over the edge, but all of this down here is the original color. You know, because we want to keep the original color about right here so that it matches to the door and we want to do our blend half of the panel. So I went ahead and blended my bumper up to about right here, meaning I just literally passed the gun across this and just let the overspray on there, you know, the overspray on there. Uh, besides that, all of our contamination, let me turn the light on here. All of our contamination covered up with no tricks or nothing like that. Just, you know, dusting some more coats of base on it. Uh, most of our spitting covered up. You can see we have some issues going on there. I think that's still spitting of trash um, in the first coat. Uh, and there's some there. But besides that, you can see all of our dents and dings right there and that. But, I mean, this, I mean, this is fast work. Um, our whatchamacallit is still there and our scratches are still there. So scratches are really hard to get to go away with just base coat. You've got to do primer work. So if you got scratches and you care about them, you got to do primer work. Um, but besides that, you can see on my tape, if you pay attention to my tape right there, you can notice that my color does not go very far at all. So my color pretty much stops. Like I didn't touch this panel. I literally just flicked the paint gun off of this panel and what dusted out, dusted out. But there's no color absolutely back there. All of that still matches the original and it's just oversprayed right here. Now, when we come in here with our next color, we're gonna purposely bring it to about right where our overspray stops on our drop coat, and then we're gonna let it flick out to there. That way, hopefully, it's dusting about center of the panel, and then it slowly transitions into absolutely no paint. We want absolutely no paint on that end. So all of that tape on that door handle and that end of the door should stay yellow. We don't want no paint on there because we want that door to match that perfectly, and we want the color to fade so that your eyes don't see it. Boy, I'm out of breath trying to talk fast. I like to get information to y'all as quick as possible and not drag these things out because the videos are long enough. So I'm gonna go clean my gun out, get rid of the, all these metallics and everything that was in that paint and put the actual color in and then we will lay the actual color down and check back. You can see there that uh, that coat, uh, that took a whole quart or a whole pint of mixed paint is what it took to drop that down. So that shows you that if you were using your original color, um, if it took a pint to just get that drop down, and now it's gonna take another pint to cover that drop coat up, you would have needed a quart all day long, just like I said, to start with. This was $85. Take $85 and times it by two and holler at me. We don't wanna spend that money. Okay, as you can see where we just, I just showed you that color, that was my, um, new color compared to the old color so we're in here mixing the clear cut up now this is what we are shooting not by choice not for any reasons um this is just as you can see on the can a little bit of rust and crap this is some stuff i need to burn up flip cars i'm trying to use uh some of this old stuff up uh this one is a high solid so it mixes four parts clear and if i can get the freaking top off four parts clear one part hardener and 0.5 on the reducer so half reducer so i've come up to the seven line we're going to take the hardener up to the next seven and then we're going to go 0.5 on our reducer i'm not going to show you how to shoot clear that's not what this video is about but i figure somebody would ask what clear are you using 
and I want and have that information for them when I am answering that question. So I figured I'd go ahead and show it. So let me get this mixed up and I will show you what that actual legit color looks like before I put the clear on it. So like I said, we're gonna take this to 0.5, meaning we're just gonna roughly split it and hopefully that looks good enough from your house. So it's more like a solid. <laughs> There's no science to this. Like you ain't gotta be that picky. That's the reason why I love flip cars because I can laugh about it and the stress is not there because I don't care. Um, we have cleaned out our paint gun and we're ready to put our clear in. Let's go check out what we got in the booth. All right, so there's what our correct color looks like. So this color, when I took my paint gun and my fan pattern, you know, my pinky being the end of my fan pattern, I pretty much went like this. I kind of wanted to stop my new color on this body line because when your panel angle changes, the flop will change. So this will help you kind of hide your um, uh, difference in shades, if you have any. Uh, it, will, it will help improve your chances at getting away with this. Um, we do this all the freaking time, but you're still obviously going to have paint going down here. But my primary focus is painting this little area right here to match the hood. I'm not taping it off. You definitely don't want to do that. Never, ever do that because uh, then you'll have a line where you can clearly see it. But I'm just focusing on blasting paint here and just letting anything overspray down to there. So all of this from about right here down has no new paint on it. So this should match our door perfect. So when you're coming up to buy this vehicle and you look at the side of it, the color should match. Even if the front don't match, uh, that should match to that. And then hopefully your eyes won't see the difference if there is any. So that's, that's the trick here is we want to hide it. You can see how clean our tape is, where you can see right here how dirty it is, okay, where the paint got. And then you can see how there's really no paint hardly. It just kind of stops and there's absolutely no paint on all of this down here. So this will match 100% uh, to the original paint. And then of course, all the bumper, we got all of that. So all of our contamination on the front all completely went away. I mean, you look at this, this looks absolutely amazing. So it just goes to show you how much you can paint over issues and still turn out fine. Um, this all looks absolutely amazing. I promise I did not wet sand, did not uh, put any uh, fish eye remover in it. If I did, I would have told y'all and taught y'all because I don't care on this channel. Like I'm not trying to make myself look good. Uh, I've got dents everywhere. Uh, I'm painting with trash all over the floor. I'm not trying to show quality. I'm just trying to educate. Uh, all of this looks good. This is flaws in the original paint rock chips that were not filled. And then if we go over here, our uh, tree sap is still there, but all of our contamination is gone everywhere. All of our contamination is gone. Our scratches are still there. So you can still see our scratches. This is why it's important to either use dolphin glaze or primer. And you should also always take off your badges and all that if you're doing high end work, but we're not, we're doing garbage work. So you can see my paint starts fading right here and it's really solid right there. So I like to kind of stop my blends under my mirrors. That way, if the sun is shining like this, when you come to look at a car, if this mirror kind of throws a shadow down the door, hopefully it will help hide that blend. If it's shining this way, you get the idea. Hopefully that mirror at some point is throwing a shadow and will help hide it, even though our blend should be fine. But I just want to double, triple stack tricks to hopefully get away with all of this on every single car. So as you can see, we have like no paint on none of this. There's a little bit of overspray that's just dusted in the air from flicking the gun like this, but I never went past the mirror with the paint gun, never. All of this is just what floated through the air. And this tape right here has absolutely no paint on it, not even overspray. So this, these doors will match perfect. You've all seen when the front bumper don't match, that's because they didn't blend. They didn't blend. So uh, let's get some clear coat on this. I'll let it dry. And um, I'll probably show you what it looks like in the booth real fast. But then most importantly, uh, we're gonna shove this thing out of here. We're trying to get this for sale today. We absolutely rush these things. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like in the sun, untaped. All right, so our little Impala is out of the paint booth, as you can see. Let's go take a look at it and see what we got. Let me show you. All right, so there's what we got. So remember, we blended this fender. If you look close right now, you can see the splotchiness. Um, that's. I'm not 100% sure what that's from on this situation. I do these things so fast, paying so little attention. More likely, it's probably the gun spinning. Um, I can see it really good on the camera, but the camera's picking it up more than you can in person. So uh, in person, you don't see it that bad. If somebody was coming to look at this car to buy it used, obviously, they will never catch that. So um, our fender to our door matches perfect. Again, 
the car or the camera is really throwing it off. This is super high gloss, it's brand new. This is faded. So if you buff this out, it will look better. I showed you that we put physically put no color from about right here, forward has color. But this right here to this, there's no color right there. And you can see the camera is making it look like it's different. And all that is is that the new clear coat goes on your fender and it freshens up this fender and makes it pop, makes the old metallics and old color pop more than this faded and wore out stuff. So if this was buffed all out and detailed, it would match even better. But in person, you just got to take my word on this. In person, it's way better camera is just really bringing out the pearls and everything it's making all this look a lot worse now in person this does these colors right here are off because obviously this is the old color this is new color whereas down here that's old color old color so that is off but uh, nobody's gonna pay attention to that minor stuff uh, once you start learning all of these things uh, it will bug you when you start looking at other people's cars and they have never even noticed stuff and then all of a sudden you start noticing things and it starts driving you crazy it's kind of like a curse um over here you can still see our scratches so they did not definitely go away and you can see the orange pill level is a lot higher i don't take my time on this and uh this is high solid so it's uh, a lot thicker again that color is going to be off but we actually have scratched paint from the accident all the way right here and we're not fixing it so that's the type of stuff we don't worry about you know when we do these cars i put a run in it right there i don't mind showing it y'all know i ain't got nothing to hide i don't care um, so what happens with that is often with the high solids, I always put runs right there. Um, you'll come in and you're spraying like this, mirrors in the way, you got to get up here. So you're kind of flicking it under and then you come over here and you're kind of flicking it under and then you're picking back up. So what happens is this area right here gets double to clear, triple to clear. So it's hard for me, I'm probably the oddball, um, but it's hard for me to keep uh, a run out from right there, but that will wet Santa buff right out tomorrow morning or later on this afternoon. Um, you might be able to tell on camera where it looks like it's two different colors. Uh, in person, I can kind of pick it out, but for an untrained eye, they never will. It kind of looks like two different shades, but if you recall, we put no color there. So again, this is an example of a brand new clear coated panel versus the old. So you can have two doors that match perfectly. And if you'll just go clear coat one and not the other, it'll all of a sudden look like the colors don't match just because of how the difference in the orange peel, the difference in the new clear, all of that is gonna change everything um, slightly. So the average person just doesn't catch that stuff. And that's the cool thing about doing, you know, salvage and stuff like that is when somebody hires you to paint a door, then they're automatically comparing that door to the door beside it. And then that's how you end up hating your job. Uh, but when you're doing salvage, they just walk around it, they look at it or, you know, whatever, and everything looks good. So overall, this car looks really good. I'm happy with it. Um, I understand that the camera's probably throwing some stuff off, but it's just what it is. Like you can see how bad the deck lid right there. See that? All over that, whatever that crap is. So that's the reason why we don't put, it's also all over the trunk lid. Right there, it's kind of hard to see. It's all over the trunk lid. You can see it really good in person. The camera's hiding it for some reason. Um, but that's the reason why we don't put a ton of time into these things. And then look at this right here. Somebody took Scotch Bright to try to get tree sap off. Don't put scotch Sprite on your car to get tree sap off. Um, but that's the reason why you don't get so carried away on the front end, because then you got the whole rest of the car that has flaws all over it. So when people are walking this car, I guarantee money that I'm gonna have nobody complaining about that front stuff. And instead, somebody might point out like that stuff. So they'll point out stuff that's not even related to us. Dad, here's how our headlights turned out. So the headlights look brand spanking new. Oh, it's hot. So hopefully that will help some of y'all uh, with your projects and maybe some questions that you had about paint or painting, panel painting and stuff like that. And uh, that way, maybe you'll learn something. So hopefully try to try to put out a little bit more videos that have some knowledge to help y'all out than uh, boring, boring, more boring stuff, I guess you could say. Like, comment, subscribe, smash that bell button. Uh, we're trying to comb through the issues on the uh, comment and trying to get it tuned. Uh, should be an update video out sometime this week, um, and I'll catch y'all the next one. Thanks, y'all.